Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our rhythm game tutorial. So, we've got our buttons now scrolling down, or our arrows scrolling down, for us to press our buttons in time. But of course, at the moment, we have no music or anything like that. So, the next thing we're going to do is uh, set it up so we can actually play some music. And to do that, we're going to create a game manager that will basically manage everything that happens in our game and will manage starting to play the music and stuff like that. And our game manager should also really control the um, scrolling of our little albums here. Well, not the scrolling of them, but the starting of the scrolling, because obviously we have a whole script for handling the scrolling itself. So in our scripts folder, we're going to create a new C Sharp script that we'll call game manager. And we're going to open this up here. And first thing we're going to do is add a few variables for us to use. Now, if we're going to want to use music in our in our scene, we're going to need to have a way to call that, obviously. So we're going to have a public audio source uh, that we'll just call the music for this particular level. We're going to have a bool. We're going to create a public bool that we'll call start playing. This is what we're going to use to start our music going. We're going to obviously need to control the beat scroller because we know that's what makes the notes fall down the screen. So we're going to create a reference to that. So public beat scroller, we'll call the BS. And that'll do for now. That'll, that'll, that'll be enough for ourselves at the moment. So let's just jump back into Unity. And we're going to set up a little object to control our game manager. So once that's compiled, we can create an empty object that we'll call game manager. And we'll make sure that's at zero. Yes, it is. Then we're going to add the game manager component to it. So I'll actually just click and drag our script onto there. So we're going to need to drop in the music. Well, for that, we're obviously going to need to have a music file in our scene. And for that, we'll go into our rhythm game assets, go to the music folder and there's two files here, there's a slightly longer one and a shorter one. We'll go with the shorter one for our purposes. So I'm just going to drop that in there. Then on our game manager, we can drop that into that slot. And of course, with this music, we don't want this to play as soon as it starts because we want it to wait until we tell it to start going. So we're going to turn that off. And we don't want it to loop either because we want it to play all the way through uh, one sequence of the music. Okay, so back to our game manager then. We obviously need a reference also to our beat scroller. So we can just grab our beat scroller, which is on our, uh, no, not on our buttons, where are we? On our note holder here. So we can click and drag that in there like that. And there we go. So we have our game manager set up. So let's open up our script again and let's start actually doing some stuff with it. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to use our game manager to control when we're starting uh, our music playing and stuff like that. So we know that, first of all, we want to start off with if our start playing is false because it should be false by default so we're saying if not start playing so we haven't started playing yet well then we're waiting to see if the user presses any button so we'll say if input dot any key down like so I'm putting my brackets in properly there we go so the first thing we'll do is set our start playing to be equal to true and much like back in our beat scroller where we changed our has started to be true we're not going to do that in our beat scroller anymore because we don't want that to be the thing setting our values so I'm going to just comment that little bit out but then back on our game manager we're going to say okay on the beat scroller tell it that it has started so the beat scroller should now start moving like so and the other thing we wanted to do is when we press the button, we want to start the music playing. So we'll say the music dot play. And that's essentially all we need in our little game manager here. This is, that's how we can get the music going in our little game. Now, obviously, there'll be a lot more that we're going to add as we go forward, but that's all that we need there for the moment. So let's just switch back into Unity and test this out to make sure it's working. So now that we started. So you go. You can see the music is playing. Obviously, at the moment, there's a lot more music than there is notes that we had here, but that's okay. The other, the next thing we want to do is make sure that the tempo of our music 
is or the tempo of our scrolling speed is the same as our music so I know for example that the music that we created for this if I go to our note holder the tempo of it is actually um, 126.4 that's just the tempo that was set up when the music file was made uh, and it's important to remember that your tempo for your scroller for your note beat scroller on your note holder has to be the same as whatever the music is because for example uh, if I if I go to do this now what should happen is each one of these should line up with a beat as we hear it so if you see that beat there if you could kind of it's sometimes hard to get a grasp of it but it was on beat there for example but if I were to change it to maybe 90 and we press play we we'll do it again these are just completely off rhythm at that point so it feels wrong um, so that's why you need to make sure that you use the correct tempo for your music so as I said we'll stick this back to 126.4 is the correct one <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that we can check for when we hit or miss a note in our little game here so for that we're going to jump back into our game manager first of all and we're going to add two little functions in we're going to add a public void note hit like so and then we're going to add a public void note missed and for now all we're going to hear or not here all we're going to write in here is debug.log uh, hit on time and then down here I'm just going to add debug.log uh, what we say missed missed note okay so for now that's all we're going to hear to put in just so that we have a way of verifying which notes have been hit and missed so with that done the next thing we need to do is set up hey when are we actually detecting whether a note was hit or missed now if we go back into unity and we look at our buttons and our notes we know that our notes are scrolling down and when we get into this little area essentially we need to say hey at this point we're checking if we can be pressed if we go look at our uh, note object here for example we know that we have the can be pressed variable and this is what's destroying or deactivating the object when it's pressed so that's fine when we exit the trigger area we're also saying hey, air can be pressed now is false and the object is just uh, faded off the screen so what we want to do at this point is say hey from here we want to tell the game manager oh that we either hit the note or miss the note and to be able to do that obviously we need a reference to the game manager but we don't, don't want to have to put a reference to the game manager on each individual note object that's a lot of work having to assign it or having to find it at the start which would obviously uh, slow things down significantly in your game because you could have hundreds and hundreds of notes being pressed so what we'll do instead is go back to our game manager and we're going to make it a, a static instance of itself so we'll create a public static uh, game manager that we'll call instance like so and then what we can do is in the start function just say the instance is equal to this so we will only ever have one game manager when we make it static that means there can be only one variable for every if there was multiple game manager scripts they could all only have the exact same instance value here but of course we'll never have that we'll only ever have one game manager and then it's just a way for every other script to, get to look at this and go okay for on the game manager script just get whatever the current static instance is and then we can make changes using that so if we save this and go back to our note object when we uh, either successfully press a button or um, the button is missed we'll basically do some little things here so for example what we would do if if we can be pressed instead of just deactivating the object we would say okay on the game manager dot instance we will call the note hit function 
like that and then that'll tell the game manager hey we just hit a note so we're we we successfully did what we want to do so we'll save that and then also we also have obviously when we exit the area which we have down here we'll just say game manager dot instance dot note missed like so so we'll save this and now what we should then happen is whether our note is hit or missed we'll get a little message in our console so let's go back into unity and test this out so keep your eye in this little text area down here actually what we'll do is open the console over here we make it easier to see this should be updated as we either hit or miss notes so i'm gonna hit the first two and miss the third note and the the rest of the subsequent notes is what we're going to try and do so if i start it there we go well i hit the first tree i couldn't resist it apparently um but we hit the first tree and then we missed the second two so we know now that hitting and missing notes is working the correct way we want it to so now that we have our game manager in place and the ability to hit and miss notes we can now go ahead and take a look in the next episode at actually getting points for hitting and missing notes